Good evening. We welcome you to worship. We pray that you are having a very blessed Thanksgiving time, and we are so glad that you can join us. Just a few quick things. First off, we invite you to take out the Red Fellowship pad at the end of your aisle to record your attendance. But we just want to extend a thanks to all who were a part of the special donations that took place at this special time of the year as we gathered uh, Thanksgiving baskets for 22 families and were able to bless those uh, families with those Thanksgiving baskets as well as uh, this past week we were able to go ahead and pack 189 shoe boxes for Operation Christmas Child. And so thank you all uh, who gave generously to those opportunities and for the other connections that are there. So we are glad to have you here tonight, but we also want to invite you to join us next Wednesday as well as we begin our midweek Advent services. Is that we have an option of a 345 afternoon Advent opportunity as well as a 630 in the, af- in the evening uh, Advent opportunities. That the afternoon will be kind of more typical worship service. Is that the evening service will be put on by our Calvary School children and presenting that message of hope of Advent and the very promise of the birth of Christ. But with those announcements being made is that we now join together in our Thanksgiving worship as we begin with our opening hymn. Begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will praise the name of God with a song. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. This is his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness. Let us pray. Almighty God, your mercies are new every morning, and you graciously provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you with willing obedience all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, We join together in our hymn of praise.
together in response to the fourth petition to the Lord's Prayer. What does this mean when we pray, give us this day our daily bread? God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without prayer, even to all evil people. Do we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving? We pray. Heavenly Father, be with all who find themselves lacking in needs of daily life. Give us hearts of compassion to see the needs of others around us that we may learn that it is better to give than to receive. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading this evening comes to us from the 30th chapter of Proverbs, where we gain not just morality, but wisdom for life. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his works, lest he rebuke you, and you be found a liar. Two things I ask of you. Deny them not to me before I die. Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is needful for me, lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this evening comes to us from Paul's letter to the Christians and the church in Philippi, the fourth chapter. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, 
but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for gathering us into the family of God. Give Christians together throughout all lands hearts of thankfulness and praise for all your gifts to us. Teach us, O Lord, to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom and a spirit of gratitude. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. We join in the hymn. We will stand on the third verse. reading from St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the, the grass of the field, which is today alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? That therefore do not be anxious, saying, 
What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. That in hearing God's word, we come to realize that we have all fallen short of that glory of God that we have not always acknowledged from whom we have received every gift that is called good, is that nor have we regularly returned proper thanks for what he has given. Yet we too often have been discontent with our possessions, harsh in our attitude and our action towards others, and selfish in our own use of his gifts, that therefore we come this day with contrite hearts, seeking his forgiveness. Therefore, together we pray. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. That Almighty God, his steadfast mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are seated for our hymn. thanksgiving mean to you? And how would you go ahead and answer that? If someone were to pose that to you in the midst of your thanksgiving celebrations of that conversation that happens, what does thanksgiving mean to you? What things would come to your mind and mouth with such a question? Is that football? Family? Food? So I think we can come up with quite a few more F words if we really desire. So maybe, maybe it's Thanksgiving, searching the Black Friday ads. Maybe that's your Thanksgiving. I know that's unfortunately too often a part of my Thanksgiving. So what, is food, what does Thanksgiving mean to you? Is it a day off? A long weekend? <laughs> is it time away from the house, away with others? Or is it time at the house 
with no excuse of having to leave it whatsoever. So what is Thanksgiving? Is it a day of excess, too much food, too much uh, football, too much dessert, too much beverages, or whatever it may be? Is it what is it that we find Thanksgiving to really be about? There's many things that we might associate with this day that we celebrate. There's many things that come to mind out there splashed across our TV screens of what Thanksgiving is. But for you, what is this time all about? So that hopefully it's not simply that opportunity to feel another dose of religious guilt that I should be more grateful. So that unfortunately, I think that that is often the very way that we experience thanksgiving. Man, I should be more thankful. <laughs> that doesn't sound very thankful. That doesn't come across very joyous. I mean, in the broad scheme of things, what is it that we do at this time of year? That we count our blessings. We think about all that it is that is now poured into our life. That there are so many things that are there, but I think that so often we spend our time worried about all of the things that we didn't thank for and all of those things that are there, and we all of a sudden, once again, let life simply rush us past an opportunity for us to stop, to give thanks, to give praise in all things, to rejoice over what we enjoy each and every day. That today we come to this very place of all of the places that we could gather and all of the things that we can do for thanksgiving, that we begin our thanksgiving celebrations here in this church for there is a need not just to be thankful in general or not just simply to realize how much we have, but to understand and know from whom all of those blessings so freely flow. Is that I think that when I turn to our reading in Proverbs, I see that what does thanksgiving mean to this individual who writes to us today? Agur of Jacob, the son of Jacob. There you go. You're familiar with him, right? If I asked you biblical trivia, who's Agor, you guys are all ready to pounce and get in. Maybe not. But he gives us these words of wisdom. That he says, Lord, give me freedom from falsehood. But secondly, give me neither hardship nor as hardship and poverty nor wealth. That two things I ask you of you, do not deny them to me. They remove from me falsehood and neither give me poverty nor riches. So why would he ask for these two things? Why are these the things that he would find as that very opportunity for us to think about Thanksgiving today? Well, maybe I might go ahead and ask that question that is there. That if I were to ask you that question of how many of you are rich, how many of you guys would simply, yeah, that's me? Is that, would you be that very first one to go ahead and say, yes, I am rich? See, what does it mean that he prays that he would simply have neither too much or too little, but have just that right amount? But the fact is, is that as we find that we are rich beyond all means, but what do we often consider ourselves to be? Is that as Andy Stanley put, points out in his book, How to Be Rich, so what's that magical line of what makes someone rich? What's that magical figure? that he says that studies continue to show up in Money Magazine and Gallup polls and everything. How much is it to be rich? Is that roughly two times the amount of money that you have or make right now? That's what the studies show. 
But if you ask people of what it is to be rich, it's roughly about twice what I have or what I gain right now. So in 10 years when that number is different, is that maybe you've crossed that line that you think is that line for rich now, but what do you think that that's going to be 10 years from now? Is that just haven't quite made it there yet. <laughs> so how do I know that to be true? Because it's reported that John Rockefeller, in the midst of all of the, monies, the money that he made and everything else, this was the man who became the first billionaire. He was making a million dollars a week. Now, I would argue that that's rich. <laughs> and yet when he was asked how much is enough, he said to the person who asked, well, just a little more. <laughs> that isn't that the very way that our heart sometimes continues to live? That we're after just a little more, or somehow it's just not enough, or there's always that little bit of this or that. That rich is somebody else. That rich is not me. But the fact is, is that we have been blessed. We have been gifted. We have so much to be thankful for. And I'm not just simply talking about the overabundance of food on our tables or the amount that we have for in, within our bank accounts or anything else that is there. That we are rich for the very fact that we have promises and gifts and things that are given to us that simply to others do not even begin to be able to be comprehended. That there are gifts that our God now gives to us and comes to offer. But how do we see this life? Not how do we see ourselves or our bank account or what we find, but how do we see this life? Is life a gift? Or is life simply a grind? <laughs> that thing that we just keep on working hard at, slaving away at, doing again and again. Or is life that gift? That free gift that God has so freely given and continues to shower and bless us and give us yet even more. See, Luther once said it this way. He said, God is like an eternal, unfailing fountain. The more it pours forth and overflows, the more it continues to give. God desires nothing more seriously from us than that we ask Him for much and great things. Is that what is it that we have? We have a God who is an overabundant giver, one who gives us of His grace, His mercy, His peace, His forgiveness, His love, His grace. And he supplies for our needs of each and every day. But do we see it as that? Do we see it as that abundant, free gift, one that shall fill our lives with thanks and praise? Or do we find ourselves more often grumbling about what is going wrong than what we have been blessed with? Do we find ourselves more often simply worried about all of the things that are there rather than rejoicing over what we have. I mean, God has gifted, God has blessed, God has in all things given us freely of His very gifts. And this is nothing that we are to repay. It is not something that is simply that means by which we give back. I mean, just imagine with me for a moment. Let's just pretend that your car or cars all decided to conk out at the same time and simply they are unfixable and just absolutely dead. And I'm going to ask you to take this imagination a little bit further. I'm going to go ahead and ask you to imagine. Well, let's just say that a pastor is the most lucrative position and occupation that there might be. It's going to be a short, very moment of that pretending that that's true. But let's just pretend that in the midst of your situation, that I was so blessed and gifted that I would just want to buy you a car or cars. 
said, sure enough, you could refuse it, you could accept it, but could you simply say that you need to pay for it? Now, I'm not saying that you could somehow, in your own way, be able to have that, that ability to buy. That all that I'm saying is that if you don't have the money, and that this luxurious gift comes your way, can you somehow go ahead and say, well, well let me give you a 20. <laughs> is that I, I need to pay something for it. Is that here's a 50. Is that accepting and receiving a gift? Or is that that understanding that I somehow need to do my part? Again, that when we come to this time of Thanksgiving, we come not to somehow be burdened by that fact that somehow we have to repay, or somehow we have to give, or somehow we have to earn, or somehow this or that. No, God simply calls us to recognize this, that He has blessed us, gifted us, that He is not looking to somehow for us to be re repaying of Him. No, He simply invites us to reflect upon how much we have been gifted, how rich we are in this life. That so George Herbert said it this way, Thou who has given me so much, give me one more thing. Give me a grateful heart to receive it. That it is only through His very gifts, it's only through His promise that He can give. That in Philippians tonight we hear that very word, that very word as Paul begins to speak of contentment. Knowing what it is to be rich, knowing what it is to be poor, knowing what it is to have much and have little, and yet Paul says what? That through it all that I have learned the secret of being content. Well, what's that secret? <laughs> well, what is it that's finally going to help me be content? Now, what does Paul proclaim over and over and over again? In those 104 verses of Philippians, Paul simply overflows us with joy, celebration, thanksgiving, and praise. Not guilt, not burden, not anything else. What does he continue to preach and proclaim to us? Well, in those 104 verses, is that 40 different times he says the word Jesus that roughly every two and a half verses, <laughs> that's quite a bit, that what is that secret of being content? It's once and again, again and again, having that very gift of Christ preached into our lives, lived into our very hearts, that we are rich for we have a God who has given us everything, who has given us of His abundance, His love, His care, His welcome, who has given us that opportunity to recognize that it is not in the much or in the little, it is not in our own giving of thanks in return, but it's only in us turning and seeing the very forgiveness of Him freely given, freely offered, freely blessing and bestowing, that we cannot pay back, <laughs> that we can only hope but insult if we somehow think that by our own thanksgiving or our own gratitude that somehow we complete this transaction. Now, God, God is the giver of every good and perfect gift that He gives to us now that very promise that we can rejoice in Him, for He is the one who is our riches, our very treasure, the very one who works in our hearts this day, that gratitude and thanks for all that has been given. That may He continue to give you this day and every day, that peace that surpasses all understanding, that guards your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please pray with me.
said, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings of this life, the thousand little things that we so often continue to see within our lives, to teach us, O Lord, to view our daily lives from a different perspective, that help us to slow down to reflect upon what truly matters, teaching us contentment with the blessings that we have already received, that bless our families, bless our homes, bless our thanksgiving time, that we may continue to see the very gift of you at the very heart of our lives. All this we pray in your name. Amen. We stand. So we confess our faith in our good and loving, caring God the Father as we thank him not only that he is our creator, but he continues to rain down each and every day the many blessings of this life. And so we confess using the explanation of the first article. I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all that I have. He richly and daily provides me all I need, his body and soul, life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. We pray. Said Heavenly Father, as Americans across our land prepare to take time to reflect upon the many blessings that they have in their lives, help them look with eyes of faith to you who gives us every good and perfect gift. Bless our nation, its leaders, its military men and women, and all of its citizens with hearts devoted to living for the good of our country in unity, service, and freedom. 
Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. said, Heavenly Father, hear us now in our private prayers as we lift up to you those things for which we individually give thanks this year. Heavenly Father, we thank you for life and faith, and we thank you for the very family of God collected together as that very holy church. We pray, O Lord, that you would be with us as we continue to encourage and support one another through all life's times of joys and sorrow. Especially at this time, we lift up prayers for the family and friends of Judy Glende, who passed away earlier this week. We pray that you would comfort them in this time of sadness, and may they continue to find the very hope and promise and peace of knowing that she is safely in your loving arms. We especially pray, O oh Lord, that in all of our times of sorrow, that we may still see with thankfulness and praise your hand at work within our lives. That, O oh Lord, as we now conclude our day and rest from our labors, we commend ourselves to you, your care as we pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I've done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the name of the Lord be praised. May he, may he who began a good work in you bring it to completion at the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. May he bless you and direct your days and your day, deeds in his peace. Amen.
God richly bless your Thanksgiving celebrations and time with family, friends, and, and all things of giving thanks to him that we pray that in all things that we may continue to be that very community of Christ connected together. Thank you for being here, and I am thankful for each of you this night. Thank you.